Hey guys, it's Christian, your Vancouver Realtor, and the topic for today's video is the seven things never to say to your contractor. And I, I've made some of these mistakes, so I don't want you to make them too, that's why I'm gonna share them with you. And I came across the an article that was very interesting, that's where I'm getting most of this, and uh, I just thought that, that it was very rich in content. And uh, especially now with contractors being booked months in advance and the cost of materials, things like lumber, being 30, 50% higher than they have been in past years, this is very topical. So you really wanna uh, get all the steps right to save yourself time and money. So let's go ahead, let's jump into these. And if you're a contractor out there, you're watching this and you disagree with what I'm saying, or you think there's a, a more nuanced point of view, share it, leave it in the comments below. I do love to get uh, opposing points of view. Now, so the seven things never to say to your contractor. Now, the number one thing is never tell a contractor that they're the only one bidding for the job. And uh, the advice here that he gives is always get a minimum of three bids. And what you can do is, of course, you can separate out the cost of materials and the cost of labor. We did this on our very first big renovation for our very first place. We had three guys come in over the course of several days. And of course, it showed us their level of motivation to take on the work but also gave us a real ballpark of how much this was gonna cost. So I think that really helps you is to go ahead and get three uh, quotes, three bids for the work. The second thing you don't wanna do is don't tell your contractor your budget. And the reason is that if you tell your contractor my budget is $85,000, they'll find a way to make it $85,000. <laughs> so. Uh, that was something I did not know when I did my very first uh, renovation. And interestingly enough, exactly what he says is what happened to me. We were working with a simple renovation of about 40,000 and it came out to about that much money. Now, what else I learned was that you should always budget about 15% more than what you're planning to spend. I don't know why, I call it the contractor tip but it just seems like every single job ends up being 10 to 15 percent more expensive than what we had planned for so if it's a thirty-five thousand dollar rental you've got planned expect to pay about 40 to 45 okay and uh, that's my rule of thumb on that now uh, moving along number three never ask a contractor for a discount up front now this seems like a crazy idea. I, I've, I've never done this, and I don't think you should do this either. You wanna hold your contractor accountable. I'm sure there's a lot of great contractors out there, but I know there's also some not so good ones, and I've had that experience myself when we did a bathroom reno on this current place where it just, it was really hard getting this, this person to, to follow through on the work. If you pay everything up front, you have nothing to hold back. And you may need to hold some money back to have them come back and finish up, do touch-ups that uh, uh, were missed in the initial phase of their work. So it's really good to make that final payment once they've done all the work. And uh, the other thing about that I've found is contractors will sometimes use leftover materials from other jobs. Okay, or even buy cheaper supplies. Uh, so you uh, definitely don't want to pay up front. Okay, ha pay in a sort of a tiered system. You know, pay after week one, week two, week three, and the final payment goes when the job is finished. Number four, don't tell a contractor you're not in a hurry. I can just tell you this from a client who I just sold her place in New West. And she did. She had. She was waiting for the Stratas handy person to come and fix a hole in the ceiling because there had been a leak from the bathroom above into her place below. And they have, of course, they had to cut a hole in the ceiling. This is a huge hole, and you know, go up there, fix the pipes, do some remediation work. And she made the mistake of telling the guys, "I'm not in a rush. Take your time." Three months later, they still hadn't come back to do the work. 
never ever say that. Make sure you tell them you are in a rush. <laughs> and the reason is too, contractors are usually working on two or three sites at once. And if you tell them that you're not in a rush, your job will get the lowest priority. And so don't do that to yourself, okay? Make sure that you communicate timelines and you have a schedule. You can say like end of week one, we wanna have the flooring done. End of week two, we wanna have the bathroom done. End of week three, the kitchen should be done. Uh, be very specific. You can put that in your contract as well with them, okay? All right, let's move along. Number five, do not let a contractor choose the materials. So that's this person's advice. And he's saying uh, that there's different types of materials. There's of course the high end product, there's the medium end product, and then there's the low end product. And uh, I would add to that, you really need to think about what type of renovation you're doing. Are you doing a renovation for an investment property you own? Or are you doing a renovation for your principal residence? If it's the first, that's what we call a landlord reno. You're gonna put in some basic flooring, uh, simple paint. You don't need to, to you know, spend over the, over the moon on it. If you're obviously doing a renovation on a principal residence, you're probably gonna to wanna to choose nicer materials. And so uh, just, and spend more money on it. So keep that in mind. You might want to even put into your contract the exact materials you want the contractor to purchase. So there's no disagreement later on about it. Uh, what we did and on that very first reno that we did is we asked the contractor to provide receipts of the appliances, of the washing machine, of the stove, for example, so that we knew that we were paying him directly the same amount of money and he wasn't upcharging us. I hope most, contra most contractors do not do that, but I've heard of them sometimes upcharging even on things like the appliances. And obviously that's not very fair to you. So we don't want that happening. Number six, never hire contractors who is not licensed or insured. Now this one seems like a no brainer. And especially if you're living in a strata, a townhouse, a condo, uh, if you have a contractor coming in to do work uh, on electrical, on plumbing, uh, change the flooring, you've got to get strata approvals for that. And if there's anything that's not up to snuff, not up to code, uh, you can be, uh, in big trouble. Imagine a contractor does some work on electrical plumbing, you cause a leak to the to the suite below, you find out that they are not insured, your insurance may not even cover you for that. And that can cost tens of thousands of dollars in damage. You do not want to be paying for that out of pocket. Make sure you see their license and that it's valid and their insurance as well, okay? All right. And number seven, don't agree to a gentleman's agreement. Again, I think this is pretty basic advice, but he's saying here, quote, always, always, always put your agreement in writing. And he says, I don't care if it's a simple one page piece of paper, just get it in writing, end quote. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. It doesn't really have anything to do with trust. It's just sometimes the picture that you have in your mind of what you want done isn't always communicated to your contractor. And by putting it in writing, I think it's just a lot easier for both of you. Plus, one or two months down the road, if there's some kind of a disagreement, you can go back to the, the original paper memo contract and say, no, no, no. Here's what we had agreed to. So it's just easier for you guys that way as well. Uh, and of course, you could write out the entire contract in great detail with timelines uh, and, and specific expenses uh, that you expect to incur. Okay, uh, finally, just in review, again, get three quotes. I think if there's just one thing you take away from this video, get three quotes minimum, especially if it's the, your very first job. If you've worked with that contractor before and they've done a fantastic job, then it's probably all right. Um, I personally like to work with people who really take pride in their, in their work. That's very important to me. Uh, so look for that in someone else as well. And I would say, I think we 
probably put up that work up front. Again, when you talk to those three contractors up front, I know it's gonna take maybe several hours, maybe more, but putting in the time and the energy up front will save you a lot of heartache and money at the back end of this. So really do that for yourself and I think you will be okay. If you enjoy the content of the video, give us a thumbs up or subscribe. We love having you join the family and we'll see you next time.